Hello fellow creators, welcome to another little tutorial. This time we're going to make a wreath for the season of winter. I have some fine point pens, my mechanical pencil, a normal HB pencil, and an eraser, and my faithful sketchbook. So let's get started. Since we're making a wreath, I'm going to be starting with a circle. So I want it to take my whole page. So this is kind of like the backbone of my wreath. I want to make sure that I have all my objects in a round. It doesn't have to be perfect, just rough like that. Now I'm going to sketch some of the main objects that I want on my wreath. So I want a nice big ribbon here. So for now, I'm just sketching really quickly where I want to place everything. So as you can see, it's very rough. That's okay, we're gonna get back to it after. I'm going to have a little winter hat over here. So I'm trying to think what things I love, I enjoy about the winter, the winter season. Maybe I'll make a little gingerbread man over here. Where I live, this is a typical little cookie at Christmas time. Maybe I might add some more cookies over here. Maybe a heart shaped cookie. I don't know about you, but winter is like cookie season for our family. And so is hot chocolate. I can't forget to make two nice, I'm going to make a double, double whammy of hot chocolate. Some winter leaves like holly. Maybe some other leaves too. Reminds me of decorating my Christmas table. Of course, for my little hat, I'm going to add in some cute designs and winter patterns. Maybe some fluff here. So this is a cookie. Might add a little flower shaped cookie with nuts around. I'll go more into the details after. So what I try to do is kind of fill out the big objects first. Here I like to add a little bird. Maybe on this side I'm going to add a stocking. Some more leaves, a star. So you can just start out by placing everything that you want. Maybe some pine cones. How about another little gingerbread man? Hmm, I don't want to make it inside, but maybe some little berry-like things. And of course, what Christmas picture wouldn't be without some pine leaves? So maybe our bird can even be leaning on one. All right, let's do our little bird quickly so I can see what else would fill the page nicely. So I start out like a little circle oval shape. This little tail and I wanna give him a nice warm scarf. I'll have his wings coming out over it. Something like that with nuts, some nice Christmas designs for the scarf. One part is coming out in front, the other one in the back. And he can be holding on to the branch here. So it's just still very rough with all my lines, but I guess I kind of gave a bit more detail to that one to start with. Maybe I'll add a little pine cone. So the pine cones, I just do a, a little ball, curly lines, and then add some little curvy lines on the inside. I 
again with some holly leaves, maybe some berries, again with some pine leaves. And pine leaves is beautiful little decoration. So I kind of make my first line like this, and then I just draw a bit more detail to our stocking now that we know that it's it's a good place for it. Should let me finish here first. Maybe I'll add another star. Some Christmas baubles. Maybe the branch can be another pine branch. Okay, so we have the general thing, and now I can kind of either go more into detail. I've already done a few details, like the bird, and but now I'm going to kind of solidify my ideas a little bit more. So I want to fill up this little spot here. I might add a few winter berries, maybe make a bit more detail to my baubles. So sometimes it helps to erase and then to follow the crease of the paper or the small part that we still can see and then add more details. That way it's not too many, too overwhelming with too many lines. Same here, I'm just going to erase the rough of it and take the same shape, but with a more sure line. Even here I can fill out a bit more. Okay, for the stocking, I wanna add few decors. I don't know if it's Scandinavian patterns, I'm not sure. Make another Christmas flower over here. Some leaves coming out. Right here, just darken my lines a little bit more. For my star, I take off the lines that are not needed anymore. I think I want my gingerbread man to head over the star. Okay, our little gingerbread man. I like him looking cute and chubby. Let me just add two little eyes, little buttons, and that's it. Here I had a little pine cone, I think. So I can go ahead and make it a little bit more a little clearer. Another Christmas flower here. And my little hot cocoa mugs. Kind of find the right shape first. It's all different types. I think I'm going to go straight down like that. Of course, the inside is going to be darker. And I think I'm going to give it a little bit of Christmas touch to it. Snowflake. The star needs a little more defined shape as well. Could be a star, it could be a cookie, I don't really know, but at least we know where it's placed. My leaves too, I kind of set in place a little bit more. My berries, that's fine. So I don't want to get all these lines mixed up when I do the inking part, so I make sure to have my sketch at least fairly clear. Okay, I'm going to work a little bit on my ribbon, my bow here. So I erase it slightly so I can have a better idea. Since my, I like to make this bow, as you know from my other videos of the season's wreaths, I added a bow for each one. This one I'm going to make a double bow but following the same general idea. Here, I'm gonna let it touch so that I can see the reverse side. Here too, I kind of determine which one goes in front and which one goes behind. It's not always easy when you're doing a double one. And our little gingerbread man is probably gonna go in front, so I'll erase part of it. Maybe do the outline of the ginger man, gingerbread man while I'm at it. His little eyes and the little buttons. Now I can continue my bow. 
Here are the ties coming from the back. Since it's a double bow, I need, I would have double ribbons too. Did something like this to fill out the spart part a little bit. I don't know. I'll see if I end up liking it. All right, let's fix up our hat and these little cookies here. That one's okay. I guess I'll make little flower cookies and I like that little shape. These are usually nut cookies, little almonds. Here I have a little pine branch. Sometimes I close it, sometimes I leave it open. Over here is missing a little leaf of some kind. Can put one in the back too. All right, for the hat, I'm going to erase slightly again. Let's fix up my sketch. I'll make like a little fluffy woolen hat. Oh, this part is like all fluffy. And here another little ball of fluff. Kind of round, roundish and cute like this. And let's make again our little winter designs or I like the little leaf design too. So I make a line and then little leaves on either side. It kind of matches the set of the mugs. And the, sh and the stocking and the birdie scarf. All right, moving on, I'm gonna fix up the little branch over here a bit better. So again, it's just a line. I end the branch with a little, it gets wider at the end there. Here I have another leaf. And I just start with lines back and forth from the middle, going out either way, any way, doesn't really matter. Maybe I have some space here. I could add another flower on this side of the wreath. So usually I would add flowers, as you know, whenever I have an empty space for Christmas, I also added some flowers and I also like to include some berries and pine cones. So I think that's good for the rough. Here are the star. Let me add a little bit of detail to it. A pine branch going this way and one going that way. Another little berry. Here too. I guess I have two little types of berries. The bigger ones and the smaller ones. A little flower here to fill up this spot. And I think I like it. I also like to add a little quote. I like adding a little quote for each season. So I'm going to need four. I'll sketch it now because then we can ink it all together after. I just want four lines. So I'm just, just doing a rough look. Make sure it's straight somewhat, but feel free to use a ruler to get it perfect. I going to make it very simple because I'm not I'm not a l great letterer even though I'd like to be one kind of like adding a twirly here and at the end I'm going to write you know what I want the lines a little bit closer to each other maybe cold I'm going to write cold hands because that's what happens to me in winter Cold hands, warm hearts. So I like mixing the two, two types of writing. I have cursive or script and just, oh, that looks a bit funny. Okay, for now we'll leave it at that. Maybe as I do my line art, I will see it a little bit clearer. Okay, so we're done with this part. I will take my fine pens and start with a 0.3 for most of the details. So sometimes I make my lines really smooth, other times I like to leave little spaces in between. And for now I'm going to leave out, I'm going to try to leave out all the little details that are inside the bigger objects. Sometimes I don't, I just automatically trace over everything, not realizing that I have two different size of pens because I just got that recently. 
When you're used to doing just everything with one pen, you just start drawing everything at once. This time I'm going to go back afterwards with a smaller size pen. I like it when the bigger objects or the outer lines, I guess, have a little bit more thickness to them. And then the inside objects or the inner lines, like the pine cone dots, would have a thinner line. Same with the leaves. I'm going to leave out the inner line for now. So sometimes I follow my sketch to a T, other times I don't. And if you don't have special ink pens, these are nothing special actually. They're not they're not the artistic art artist pens. But I find that they work just fine for me. And what I like about it is that they come in a set with different sizes. So if you go to your stationery store and you find that, just take a set. And I find that that works totally fine. Unless you're a professional artist and you need the real fancy, perfect paper and pens, then just using what you have on hand. To me, that's, that's what's most important. I could have all the fancy material, but do nothing with it. So I'm starting out by slowly building up my art supply set. Okay, I was gonna go this way. I think I prefer this way because that way I don't, I make sure not to smudge anything as I go around. And for the fluffy hat, for example, I don't even do all the little details. I don't even close it up fully because I like the little breathing space. Sometimes I do little lines, sometimes I do little triangles, sometimes more curvy lines. And that's what gives it its cuteness, I think. A little whimsical look. Okay, I'll leave those details for our finer pen. As you ink, you can also decide what goes in front and what goes behind. So I might make the cookie in front and the leaf behind, for example. Okay, moving on to my ribbon. Don't worry if you can't do your strokes all in one go. It takes a lot of practice for me too. Depends what I'm working on. Sometimes I can do it in one go like this. Whoop. Other times I, I'm a bit more wobbly or and I take a few strokes to get it to it. I find that when I'm inking, I could be do I could do a lot of I can enjoy an audio or some music or some quiet time of reflection because it doesn't take as much concentration. The sketch, I'm still thinking what I want to add to my picture, where I want to place each thing. Whereas the inking, you're just, you're kind of following your plan that you have already. Even if it's not exactly perfect or to a T, you're a little more certain of yourself. Like I might add a little thing that I didn't before, another little objects just to fill up space, but you kind of do that as you go, I guess. Here, I'll go ahead and color in my hot cocoa. So as you know, we're not going to be coloring this picture, but if it's something that would make you happy, bring you an extra time of calm and peace, relaxation, then please go ahead. I'd love to see what color choices you have for this one. Feel free to tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see your creations. And I'm not sure what you'd like to use this picture for. Me, I'm probably going to use it for my planner, my little journal for the month. I think the process is so much more important in art. So I encourage you to do that. Just draw to give yourself a little peace. It's also a way of expressing yourself. Maybe you can't express something in words, but by putting it into a picture, maybe you'll learn something about yourself. Maybe you will learn what you enjoy about the season and time, what's important to you right now. 
Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and do my text at the same time because I'm still using my wider, thicker brush, my thicker pen, sorry. One idea for lettering, which is something I'd like to try as well, is find a nice font, find a font that I like, and copy it. I'll type in the, the words that I want. That way I break out of my rut, my same type of lettering all the time. Maybe I'll give it a little twist by adding a little dot at the end, but it's always fairly similar. I think this is cute. It kind of looks like wintry vibes because it's got um, like a little snowflake. So at each end, I just add a little dot. All right, I'm going to change pen and go with a smaller size, which is 0.1 millimeters. Okay, so all the little strokes that I did with my pencil, now I'm just going to go over them with the uh, ink. See, as you can see, it's not as thick, it's not as wide. To me, it looks a little bit too dark when I add in the, the lines, the same stroke size. My leaves, I like starting with a little line and end, ending in little dots like this. Okay, I can make the patterns for my hat. And then I like the very thin uh, strokes too. It kind of gives more room to see more of it. When the lines are too thick, it gets too dark. And you miss these little tiny details. Here, I make my little almonds for the cookies. The little eyes, which I'll make in black. And then these I can just leave like that. This part of France, that's called Alsace which is close to the border of Germany, they're known for their Christmas cookies and Christmas markets. They're the most amazing I've ever tasted. They call them bredele. And these little gingerbread men, they're called menele. Anyway, they are delicious. If you ever come to France, to this part of France, to Alsace, at this time of year, which actually they only make them at this time of year, so you don't want to miss out on those. I think every country has their little Christmas traditions, but here it's known for their Christmas markets. They really get into the decorations. That's what I love about Christmas here. Oh, you could just go to every little town and village and visit the Christmas markets. The bigger cities have, of course, more into it. They get more into it. But even the little towns and villages prepare little Christmas goodies and they organize a Christmas market in the center of towns full of lights, decorations and little little chalet houses where people can sell their little decorations, their homemade cookies. It's such a wonderful time of year. Moving on to our leaves. So I do a little line and then little dots depending on how much space I have. My little pine cones, I make little U-shapes. I like making these little patterns on the stockings and hats. Most of the time, these are like reds, red colors, red and beige and brown, something like that. So I'm not going to add color because it's gonna take a little bit too long, but that's where you can, you can go wild with your creativity. It would be cool to kind of see all the different colors that everybody uses for the same picture. Here I got stuck for a sec because I put two different types of decors, so I'll do my little... This looks more like a cookie, which they do have star-shaped cookies here. So they're known for their cinnamon cookies, their nut cookies. They have some that are with anise. Anyway, some very special. And I'm going to add a little, a little texture to my text. Maybe a few little darker downstrokes. Just as the seasons change, the leaves, everything about nature changes during those seasons. I think that it's an important time for me to take stock how I myself am changing or can change with the seasons. So now that we're finished, I'm going to be doing erasing. 
I prefer to choose small goals all year round, at every season. And、uh, when January comes around, I don't feel the extra weight or pressure of I must do this, I should do that, I'm gonna do this goal or that, and have all these long lists of resolution. Because I, I'm practicing being kind and gentle with myself, and I allow myself to live each moment contented and grateful with where I am at. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little drawing time with me, and. I'll see you next time.